Hey, this is Mark, and today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 6 with no image. Uh, the phone boots up, um, and iTunes detects it as a normal phone. It's not in DFU mode or anything, um, and there's just no picture on the screen. And it's not backlight. It's definitely no image at all. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through the troubleshooting that I already did off camera. Uh, first, I checked out these two filters here, the 1.8 volt and uh, 5.7 volt filters. Um, both of those are good. Um, and then I connected a screen. Um, also, I checked backlight before I did anything, just checked diode mode, made sure backlight didn't have a problem. Um, so then I checked these couple of guys over here, they tested good. And then I connected a screen and uh, checked my um, enable and reset lines for the LCM. Um, those I know are, are necessary in order for anything else to to happen for you know those that's what enables chestnut um, which is actually what produces all the voltages that are necessary for image or, or at least most of them for image and touch <coughs> excuse me um, so then the next step in my troubleshooting was just to uh, take the CPU shield off and start measuring around for voltages um, around chestnut to see if it's producing what it needs to. Uh, and the first thing I checked was this coil right here, um, which should read about 6 volts, uh, and it was reading uh, 3.9 volts, which that's battery voltage, um, that's just the VCC main voltage. Uh, so that tells me that the chestnut is not boosting the signal like it should. Um, and then I checked both of these guys and I don't remember um, what they're supposed to be. I think this guy over here is supposed to be 5.7 and this one's 5.1. I, I don't really remember and I'm not going to look it up right now. I know one of these two, if not both of them, should be 5 point something volts um, and it was zero. So that again, tells me chestnut is not boosting. It's not producing the voltages that it should. Um, so then I just checked uh, with my finger and I can feel that it's definitely getting hot. So um, that's gonna be the solution to this one, I believe. Um, we're gonna find out. So I gotta find some fresh chestnuts. It's been a while since I've had to replace one of these guys. Um, I mean, they are, they're fairly common to need to be replaced, um, but just in my personal workload, I don't see them very often. I don't, I, you know, mostly <laughs> if I get something that has no image, it's because it's got long screw damage or, you know, it's actually a backlight problem that I've got to fix. Um, don't see chestnut very often. I used to see it so often I would have them out at my station here and just ready to use. Um, I've got to dig some out now. No, those are backlight drivers. I don't need backlight drivers. Let's see. I know. There we go. Got a big bag of them here. Let's see, I got, what's that, 60 of them? That should be enough. Oh, sorry, 59. I've used one of these. I guess I don't need to get that out until I pull the old one off first. So I just kind of 
grab the chip as I'm heating it up and I don't try to yank it off the board but I just I grab it and I try to to wiggle it a little bit and it doesn't move until those balls are melted and then once once it does move a little bit then I know I can lift it off and I'm just gonna come in and don't need to wick these pads just need to knock these solder balls off there we go that's gonna be good enough if I was to go in there and, and try wicking that um, I could do it but you know I'm risking lifting a pad I'm risking you know getting like other little capacitors nearby caught up in my uh, in my wick and I mean it's it's really just adding risk for no real reason so I say don't wick the pads I'm just adding some hot air for a few seconds and taking the hot air away, keeping my tweezers still, and then I come in and see, okay, I've got that chip tacked down now. So I can come back in and I'm looking for the chip to shift. And after I see it shift and settle, I'm gonna give it a little nudge. So it looks, there it goes, it shifted. Now just give it a little nudge. There, that's what I'm looking for. I want to see that entire chip kind of move a little bit and then lock back into place. And that tells me that all the balls underneath it were melted and that the surface tension has been broken on all of them and they are, they've really soldered to that pad well. And now I will got my test parts and we should have image battery does have 3.8 volts on it. I'm still getting no image though. Maybe this one won't be as easy as I thought it was. Yep, I'm still only getting 3.9 volts there. Zero volts, zero volts. All right, so, hmm, something else is going on here. Got 1.8 there and 1.8 there. Hmm.
chestnut still feels like it's getting hot. Yeah, see the acetone is evaporating almost immediately off of it. All right. So it's not going to be that straightforward then. Let's see. I'm going to check for some shorts to ground now. So I'm going to have to look up some of these lines in the schematic because, like I said, I, I just don't see these often enough, so I don't have it memorized. Alright, well, I know that is a 6 volt image line that should not be shorted to ground like that. So I am going to pull these two caps off and see if that relieves my short. Of course I'm going to do it one at a time so I can tell which one of them it was if it does solve it. Look at that. That was the source of the short. All right. And there we go. We've got Apple logo. Image is restored. Um, so now I'll just take a cap off a donor board, put it where that cap was, and uh, this one's done. All right, that was easy. Thanks for watching.